Hello there. Welcome back to our channel. And today we are going to analyze um, these two variations into the circuit. I have divided them into two parts. That is part A and part B. So what you see in a part A, I have a voltage source or voltage supply V plus from which I am deriving a current uh, that is uh, called as input current I in and that current gets splitted into two parts. The one goes to flow through this register R and other is trying to enter into the op amps negative input while the positive input of the op amp is uh, grounded and assuming the operational amplifier offers us the AOL, which is the open loop gain. And these are the supply pins of uh, operational amplifier. And uh, we have, uh, we can see that there is a negative feedback from, we are taking the portion of output through the register back to the negative input or negative pin of the operational amplifier. So we can see now that uh, this current is uh, flowing through R and uh, this uh, there is this, uh, if we assume that the operational amplifier AOL, which is very, very large, greater than one, uh, usually for practical op amp, it is about uh, 10 to the power five to 10 to the power seven. So AOL, which is the ratio of output divided by input VID is the difference between the two pins that is V1 and V2. And here we can write VID is uh, difference between two pins. So if we, if we say the gain is too high, it means the VID has to be zero only when the, uh, ideally if it has to be infinity, AOL has to be infinity, then VID has to be zero. It means the V1 has to be equal to V2. So we can say that due to this concept, there is this virtual short right here virtual short and the ground potential comes at the V2. And uh, assuming that uh, operational amplifier is ideal, therefore the no current is going to enter inside the pins, through the pins of the op amp. That is the current going inside the op amp is zero. Therefore the only component of IN that is available is which is flowing through this register R. Therefore, V out can be written as I in times R. And it has a negative sign there because uh, you have uh, the inverting, the uh, op-amp is uh, configured as an inverting uh, uh, mode, in an inverting mode. So that's how we can see that the input current got converted into output voltage. And the gain of this circuit is V out divided by I in, and that is your resistor R. So higher the R, higher the output for a given value of input current, and lower the R, lower is the output. So as your output is just proportional to the input current, okay? There is a linear relationship that we can see here. You have this output and you have this uh, input current I in and there is this relationship. The slope of this would be R, okay? There is another variations, which is a part B. So we see the analysis again by applying the same principle. It has open loop gain AOL, which is uh, in practical op amp very high. And then you have V1, you have V2, and due to virtual short concept again, this uh, potential at V1 appears at V2. And again, the current component of I in, go trying to enter op amp's negative input is zero. And the only component that is left is the I in is trying to go through this uh, through this uh, transistor, let's say M. 
Now there is this MOSFET and the output of OPAM is connected to the gate pin of uh, the MOSFET and we assume that the gate current is zero because which is actually the case. Uh, the advantage of using MOSFET over BJT is that in BJT you have a base current but in MOSFET you have no gate current and uh, therefore uh, you can see that this current is, which is the drain current ID. So ID is your I in, okay? And assuming the gate component is zero, gate current entering into the gate is zero, then this current is the source current, which flows through the R and that develops your drop and IS is equal to ID, okay? And therefore, the output is your I in times R, okay? And here you see the, the, the ratio of output divided by input. Again, you have a, a register R. And those two, two circuits are also referred to as trans impedance amplifier. And we can also call it as a trans resistance amplifier. Okay, so that's how the two circuits are possibly working in. So hope you understood uh, the basic operating principle of these two versions of uh, this, and this is combinedly called as current to voltage converter circuits, okay?